Welcome to the Martial Arts Lifestyle Podcast, where we talk with martial arts practitioners about their histories and the influence that their practice of martial arts has on their lives. You are listening to the free version of this podcast, which is abbreviated. Help support this program by considering to subscribe to us on Patreon, where you will get four full-length podcasts each month one week before the YouTube release date. The cost is that of about one coffee shop coffee per month. Go to www.patreon.com slash malmag to subscribe. That is www.patreon.com slash M-A-L-M-A-G. If you would like to purchase single full-length episodes of the Martial Arts Lifestyle Podcast, visit our Gumroad page at malmag.gumroad.com and that is M-A-L-M-A-G dot G-U-M-R-O-A-D dot com. This week, I get on Zoom again with one of my old friends, Kurt Cornwell, who you may remember from one of our earlier podcasts. Kurt's here today to talk about overcoming the COVID crisis and the damage that it did to many of the martial arts businesses, including not only the loss of businesses, but the loss of friends. Great success story here. Sit back and enjoy. Second interview with someone that's already been on the show. Uh, Kurt Cornwell is back, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Was that a golf clap for yourself? I mean, come on. <laughs> oh, thanks so much for having me. I'm excited to be uh, excited to be your first number two, Tim. Yay! Right. <laughs> this just gets worse the way we say it. I know. It. Yeah. The fact that you can play along with me and make it worse than I ever could dream of making. <laughs> no, thanks so much, though. I, I I just love hanging out and talking with you, so it's awesome to be here, regardless. Awesome. Well, one of the the reasons I wanted to have you back, as I was just saying, it's not not you know obviously to sit and chat with you because I you know I think we're people that could probably talk for like, hey, look, the whole day's gone. It's been ten hours, yeah, exactly. kind of thing, but. Um, you have gone through this process of, you know, we all had this collective horror of a thing called the COVID crisis a couple of years ago. And you were one of uh, a few people that I'd seen, or well, actually there's quite a few that kind of lost their school in that period, <laughs> lost their space. And um, it's a, it's a thing that people are suffering and, now you are back and you're about to have a grand opening here, which by the time this plays, the grand opening will happen of your new school, which looks like you've kind of rebranded into a whole different look and a different feel uh, a little bit, maybe. I mean, I, I'm not sure. Yeah, no, absolutely. Visit your old one. And I, and I really think that your story here might be something that's very, not only kind of encouraging to help pump yourself up here again, but for sure, others thanks. who are, finding themselves in the same situation where they sort of lost what they built uh, and hopefully can maybe gain some hope and, and that to build something new again. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. that that's um, it's motivating to me and encouraging to me to, to hear you say that. And, you know, it is, it's one of those things where like, there's most of the time when you're going through something, you're so close to it that, you know, it's hard to remember to step back and kind of see it from a big picture perspective. Right. So like anything, most days you're just kind of, you, you're, you are where you are. Um, but there has been opportunities more and more lately to stop and really think about uh, what we went through. Um, but myself, my family, my um, students and my community, and then obviously all of us at large, uh, what it was that we went through, this sort of individual and collective trauma, if you will, um, at least a drama with a D regardless. And, um, and what, it, where we've, where we've like come to today. Um, and it's, yeah, it has been, it's, it's been a long road. It's two years of uh, rebuilding. Um, I guess, I mean, do you want me to start like just kind of what went down COVID time? Yeah, with us, I think like, that'd, be a, that'd be a good place because uh, okay. hopefully, you know, people that, that are listening are, are a lot of people are very familiar with you, uh, but you know, there's, there may thanks. be uh, people who, who aren't and. Um, yeah, and fair, of, sure. Yeah. Good point. So, yeah, I mean, I've been in um, just like the real quick download have been in martial arts since I, you know, my dad was a judo guy. I started when I was six years old. So I've just, I grew up around martial arts. I've always, it's always been a part of my life. Um, I'm 41 now, so this is 35 years um, for me that it's just, it's been a part of my life. Um, I've been 
training in <clears throat> I've done a ton of different arts throughout my life, but the, the primary ones that I do now, I started um, 20 years ago uh, this month in September uh, 2023, um, which would be um, Kali, JKD, Muay Thai, uh, Mixed Grappling, c Ooh, Happy Odyssey. anniversary! Thank you. Yeah, so <laughs> this is really kind of a huge year for, for me personally. Um, you know, it's it's uh, 35 years I've been around this thing. It's um, 20 years I've been doing this particular set of arts. It's um, 16 years I've been with um, MKG International um, as a student under uh, Sifu Rick Fay, and 10 years that we've been running MKG Detroit. Um, this month is our 10 year anniversary, as well as the grand reopening of our business. So it's this really interesting, almost synchronistic, like culmination of stuff, right? And so for that reason, again, there's been a lot of opportunity to pause and kind of take stock of that. Man, this has been a lot, like a long road, a lot of interesting little adventures to get here. So essentially, we started MKG Detroit, which is the Michigan headquarters for Rick Fay's MKG International and the MKG Method, um, which is... Um, presumably people that listen know who he is. He's one of the senior full instructors under um, Guru Nisano and a bunch of other accolades. <clears throat> Excuse me. And my Sifu and my God, what an amazing guy and, you know, person that's just impacted a lot of our lives. Um, and so 10 years ago, September, 2013, we started uh, MKG Detroit initially kind of in our backyard. And then uh, we were like a pop-up school. We even joked of, I ran it all out of my truck that we were like a martial art food truck. So we had a couple <laughs> of gyms in uh, different neighborhoods around Detroit that we would teach out of, you know, one class here, one class there. We actually started, believe it or not, this is kind of a, a silly thing, but there's a community room in a brand new um, Whole Foods that they built in Midtown Detroit, and we could hold a class there for free. That's actually where we started, of all places, middle of a grocery <laughs> store. Uh, and then we would just pop up at parks with gear. You know, a couple people would know about it. We would train. Other people would walk up wondering what we're up to and throw them some pads, let them try stuff out. It was kind of cool. It was fun. It was a little bit of like a punk rock way to do it. Um, but we were working towards being brick and mortar. And as of 2015, um, that happened for us. We opened our first gym. Um, at, after about two years, we expanded two and a half years, uh, expanded, got a slightly bigger space up the street. And two and a half years after that, or two years after that, COVID hit. And you know, the way I, I kind of think about it is at that time, it took me, let's say, roughly you know 30 years to build up to that point in my life. And it took COVID three months to take it away. Right. And, you know, we had a point where we had started implementing Brazilian Jiu Jitsu as um, a program. And as it goes with BJJ, we were starting to kind of skyrocket for as far as our, our uh, memberships go. We had this really dedicated group of students that had been with me for years and a bunch of new people. The energy was unbelievable in that gym. Um, I loved that gym. I thought it was really cool. I put a lot of heart and soul into the space itself is something I kind of have always done with our, our spaces is an interesting design from the outside. That's, that's what I want to remark of. The design was amazing. That was like, yes. your gym there was one of those places. I'd love to see the photos of, I love to see the footage from, cause it's just, it was this interesting looking space, the way you go about designing your place. Yeah. It was like, it was a, a, kind of a lot of thought into it and it's the type of thing that maybe i mean i appreciate that you that you point that out because i was wondering like if anyone else even notices i just maybe i'd like <laughs> put out on this stuff but like we had a brand well, kind of in color. your category we might be the only two yeah, i don't know yeah, exactly <laughs> but like our branded colors were from um the like 1957 chevy pickup the kind of classic 1950s uh, teal turquoise color mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, the mats were altered, um, like black and gray. So they had like a checkerboard pattern, which looked like kind of this 1950s vibe, you know, and yeah, so we wanted yeah. it to be a reflection of old Detroit. We had a lot of metalwork signage and designs and stuff, wow. a lot of Detroit, uh, imagery, Joe Lewis and different stuff. And, and, you know, um, trying to really like, uh, channel that spirit of Detroit, you know, Detroit's a really resilient town, which is part of what we're talking about here today is resilience. Um, I have always described Detroit as a city that, 
you know, the, the world puts its boot on Detroit's neck and it just smiles back up through gritted teeth. You know, it's, it's, all you, you, got? Really can't, <laughs> you can't keep it down, you know? And so we wanted to kind of, you know, imbue the space with some of that spirit. And we did, I, I thought it was really cool. I loved it. Um, and so, yeah, we were at this like peak point, man. And it was really rocking and rolling. People were knowing who we were and boom, COVID hit. And I'll never forget. It was like on the Tuesday, telling people, look, this looks like it's going to be, you know, pretty serious. Um, we'll do what we have to do or we'll follow whatever guidelines they implement. But, you know, just kind of putting word out after classes and everybody really kindly, you know, like, don't worry, we're not going anywhere. We'll still be here. We'll figure it out. And on the Thursday, crickets, everybody was gone. Nobody came for any classes. And it was like that following Friday or Monday is when everything shut down, you know, so the reality of this is very contagious and is ripping through people and families very quickly. It just swelled in in a matter of days, as I'm sure it did for everybody. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and so we were one of these businesses where a couple of things we tried to um, follow CDC guidelines pretty much to the letter. Um, there was a big movement here in Michigan um, to allow MMA gyms to stay open. There was a lot of protesting. I think even maybe a couple of gym owners got arrested or something. There was a lot of stuff around that in Michigan. Um, and we decided to kind of um, follow the follow the guidelines and really do what I felt like was the right thing. And everybody has to make their own decisions. That's fine. Right. But my take was we're in a, in a business, if you will, of um, encouraging people to make safe decisions and healthy decisions. And right. the idea of like, we're tougher than COVID, which seemed to be the vibe I was getting from some other folks. <laughs> I was like, I just, I feel like that's not staying true to what it is we're, we're trying to preach all the time. Um, I don't, I'm not a scientist. I'm not a doctor. I don't know better than any of these people. Uh, all I know is how to do my um, cool, you know, stick karates, as my daughters call it. So oh, man, that's a T-shirt. That's a thing. I, you know, your kids so, are sweet. They really are. They're, they're, thanks, they're, they're amazing yeah, they're little, uh, bubbles of life. Yeah, they're a trip. I appreciate it. Yeah. And they were, you know, they're like three or something at the time. Uh, I got twin daughters. And uh, yeah, and so we 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 followed all the guidelines. We stayed closed. We ran a couple park classes that, you know, really I had like a core group of maybe six to eight people, probably six people that stayed with me through all of it. But naturally, everybody else fell off. There were so many new people right. that understandably there wasn't a lot of like, quote unquote, loyalty with those students. And in fact, some of the places that chose to stay open low key wound up taking some of the students that we had, which oh. happens, but was a bitter pill to swallow, you know, right. um, that kind of thing was, that was rough. And we didn't get any um, like rent relief or anything like that. We only got a small little bit of a grant thing. I don't know how that played out, but we really didn't get any relief or support. And so. Uh -huh. uh, I've seen some really weird things about that stuff that uh -huh. isn't necessarily our conversation here, but you know. Yeah, there, yeah. For, the us, for was, us over a coffee later another time, but yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So we wound up being forced to close the doors. I literally, I got a phone call from the property manager on like Tuesday. It was be out tomorrow, get all your stuff. I mean, it was a full gym, you know, wow. like 1800 yeah. square feet full of heavy bags. We had a whole heavy bag cage we had built. We actually redesigned the entire space so that people could train with social distancing um, we had a whole new kind of look and feel to it, added a bunch of more uh, individual like solo training equipment, invested all this money right. and yeah, be out in, in 24 hours. I managed to convince her to give me till the Friday of that week to get stuff out. And it's just sat in a storage unit ever since then. This was uh, 2021, June of 2021. Wow. And uh, and that was it, man. We closed that door and that whole chapter like i said that felt to me like 30 years of building and progression and and um oh, momentum just slam shot right 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 and so i had a season there uh a period of really feeling pretty sorry for myself dude you know um well and as you kind of should you know it's it's funny how we 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 get on people for that sure but i don't think there's anything wrong with that no, I mean, it was if it's it, 30 years later and you're still doing it, there's a problem. Yes, 100 percent. You know, yeah. Right. And it felt really tragic. And on top of this, on top of this. So I said I had twin daughters at the time, about a week before this happened, my son was born. Yeah. Right? 
Surprise, quarantine baby happened. <laughs> right? There was a full on baby going. <laughs> As a note, by the way, there were yeah. so many babies being born on the day my and son. Lots of dogs there. being adopted too, right? Dude, they literally <laughs> ran out of rooms in the delivery part of the hospital, whatever that's called. A woman had to give birth in the elevator. That's how many babies were born at that wow. time because of quarantine. That's a true story. I'm so, a quarantine elevator baby. There's yeah, something. exactly. Right. <laughs> so, that's um, a I hope she. I hope whoever that is forms a band and they call it that. <laughs> Quarantine <laughs> elevator baby. That's it's right. kind of like a weird punk band, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, I mean, like we had all this life happening. Um, one of my dearest friends, who was kind of one of my assistants at the gym, passed away from COVID, very uh, suddenly yeah. and unexpectedly. Um, Theo, God bless him. And all, all this stuff just happened like within a week, man. It was all literally it, within a seven day time period. And, uh, you know, like all of us, you really feel like not only the rug gets pulled out from under you, but just your whole life is kind of flipped inside out. Right. And it, so it did, it turned really did my head in. And I had a period of like, I don't think I'm going to teach anymore. You know, I'll still work with my, the couple guys that are still with me. And obviously I'll always be doing martial art, but as far as trying to make a go at this, it just, it took all the air out of me. I'm like, I don't think I want to do it. And we had this huge blessing. There's a couple that lived across the street from us that did some park classes adjacent to where we were doing them during quarantine that um, they're a CrossFit group. They own a CrossFit gym. And it was kind of funny. They had this whole big studio space inside of their gym that had like um, busy crossroad uh, uh, street frontage with a bunch of windows, really cool spot inside of their gym. And they were like, we're a CrossFit gym. That's our cardio room, which means nobody uses it. <laughs> right? So I don't know. That's all I know about CrossFit, but I thought it was kind of funny. <laughs> so they're like, why don't you move in and at least teach some classes there? Whatever, you know, like um, take a one or two days a week and run a class there instead of out of your backyard. We'll, we'll kind of hook you up. You know, this is terrible that this happened. We want to try to help you out. And I'd done like kids camps and stuff for them before. So we knew each other and we're neighbors. And honestly, I mean, had they not done that, I have no idea what would have become of me in that regard, but um, they definitely saved my ass, man. So we went in there one or two days a week and it just grew from there. I mean, the first several, the first month or two, there was maybe two to three people in the classes and then more people, more people. Now we add more classes. Now we kind of moved in our signage. Now we're really taking over this whole space as the primary group that's in this space and renting from them and uh, and we did that for two years to the month from July of 21 to July of this year, at which time we signed a lease on our own space again. So it took us Woo. two years to, um, to kind of fight back <clears throat> and keep rebuilding, keep trying new things, failing, trying again, failing. I'm really, really good. I have an eighth degree black belt at failing. I can tell you that much. <laughs> um, <laughs> And going over and over again until, you know, just exponentially it starts to grow. And the result was, oddly enough, this I think is interesting. The group that we have now post-COVID is so different than the one we had pre-COVID. Pre-COVID was mostly people interested in martial arts and wanting, like, you know, people that want to train. They kind of want to get down. You know what I mean? A little more crash bang. You know, if we're doing... Um, Pontiac, and we're putting the bicep pads on, we're smashing in, we're really working this stuff. The group we have now is really centered on like a joy of moving, right? Um, the the love yeah. of having a, a practice to plug into, a personal practice that's healthy, learning new skills, um, self development, self empowerment, that kind of stuff. All those all those bigger messages have really resonated, and it's become this tight knit little subset of our greater community that we have. And it's, um, I'm proud to say, I'm not sure how it's come about this way. It's it's probably the most diverse group of martial arts students I've seen. Um, as far as like types of people, we have no like, well, what's your main, you know, uh, uh, type of student that you have? What do, what do we call that? Um, what, do you, what do you call it in, in sales? You're trying to find the right. Um... Oh, target group, right? Probably, yeah, like demographic or whatever, demographic, so yeah. or that sort of thing. Um, there's nothing like that. It's we our demographic is Metro Detroit. Like we have the entire intersection of the community here represented, and it's become sort of about representation and inclusivity through the practice of martial art, making this practice available to literally everybody. 
uh, every body type, every every type of personality. Um, that's become our new mission is is that sort of pushing forward and finding a way to um, excel as an individual and as a community. And I think it's a direct result of the fact that that's what we underwent. You know, we lost everything and kept pushing forward. Um, I see martial art first and foremost as a practice of perseverance, right? Can you, right. can you keep going forward? The hardest day you'll ever have is the first day you walk through that door, you work up that courage to just go in and see what is, what's it going to be like. Right. <clears throat> and then from there, you're continuing to be challenged in new ways. And, and again, you fail and you, what's the expression, get down, knocked down seven times, get up eight, right? right. That kind of thing. And so I, I ultimately was decided like we have to keep going and keep pushing till the wheels fall off because that's what this practice is and i've been preaching that message i mean you know we've talked about this uh, yeah. countless times now you know um that to me is is my sort of mission as a martial art teacher to preach that message and if i quit then everything i've ever said or done is bs you know what i mean i can't stand on my own feet anymore and say this is about perseverance and and bettering yourself if i just throwing the towel, you know? Right. Um, and now we had this new community of students that I felt um, a loyalty to them to keep pushing forward. And the result is uh, we've got our, we've soft opened in the very, uh, on August 1st. And then our grand opening is October 1st. So we're two months in and it looks like we're, I mean, we're at least in black in the first two months. So we're, <laughs> we're going, yeah. we're doing well, man, we're growing already. And um it's a it's a pretty remarkable thing and it's it couldn't have happened without that group of students that's just the truth um but it's yeah it's been a it's been a lot of work it's been a kind of a winding road to get here um but oddly enough we're somehow better for it and that has to be the message of this thing we've all gone through is finding ways to reframe some of this experience and go okay what are the positives and if they're if it's hard to find them just being patient enough to to have the faith that you will find the positive somehow, you know? Right. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's not, unfortunately everything isn't um, instant coffee, so to speak with it. It's not an instant because we got a lot of information, let's say hmm, we got sure. a lot of information during the COVID period that it, it is, I think we're still figuring out mm -hmm. exactly what all of this means. I mean, in, in the, in a science sense, it, it's very simple. <laughs> it's not something that hasn't been happening forever and ever, but in a social sense, in a, a social paradigm sense, in an inner relationship sense, we got a lot of information and I think we got tested real hard. And I think a, a lot of us, and, and I think we're going to see some weird divisions probably coming out of it because people learn some very different lessons. So they think anyway from this yeah, and absolutely you know, I think there's going to be a lot of um weird reaction like we saw with when it was happening uh continuing uh for a while but i think i i like what your group has found there which is hey there's specific things we can all do but maybe the base thing is this healthy happy thing and i think that's a yeah. good Absolutely. And I think, you know, I mean, to your point, like, I think one thing that we saw during that experience, you know, we think of whether you want to, we want to use terms like civil unrest or whatever, you know, is everybody's emotional self was all the way up to the surface, right? You know yeah. what I mean? If you're somebody who buries it down, that stopped. <laughs> And this concludes the abbreviated version of the Martial Arts Lifestyle Podcast. Please click the like and subscribe buttons as well as the notification bell. Also consider subscribing to the full-length podcast at www.patreon.com slash malmag or purchasing individual full-length episodes at malmag.gumroad.com. Thank you for listening to this episode with Kurt Cornwell again, part two, coming up next week. A fascinating guest from the United Kingdom, Sid Siddiqui. Check out the Malmag store at www.martialartslifestylemagazine.com and click on the store tab. There, you will find a full selection of Timmy B's brand sticks for FMA and Kirby Kerbong, as well as Timmy B's and Dos Manos t-shirts. Many more products coming soon. Also, click on our courses tab to purchase online courses, right now featuring the course in the Dos Manos stick of FMA. More courses to come. 
This show is produced by Martial Arts Lifestyle Magazine. Visit us at www.martialartslifestylemagazine.com and enjoy the free version of our online magazine with articles, a recommended schools page, and a worldwide events calendar. Music by Jack Al Relic. Martial Arts Lifestyle Magazine and the Martial Arts Lifestyle Podcast are trademarked and copyrighted by TNT LLC. Yeah.